Now that we've reviewed our rules of rational exponents and how to all the seven properties that go along with them, now we're going to apply the properties. So our first example, we have 4x to the 0, y to the negative 2, z to the 3rd, over 4xz to the negative 5. Now there's several ways you can attack this problem and there's no rule that says you have to apply this property first. It's not exactly like the order of operations which says parentheses, get rid of parentheses first. However, I can go that route with it and apply those steps the same way. Okay, so in this problem here, I noticed First off, I notice that I'm going to have one, two, three, four total bases, four, x, y, and z. Also, I notice that there's division involved. So, in this case, I'm dividing, and I can go back to what we learned before. Follow the quotient rule, which says, same base, subtract the exponents. So, if I want to... I can put an exponent here with a 4 and here with a 4. So this becomes 4 to the 1 minus 1, okay? So this one, x to the 0, here is a power of 1. So x to the 0 minus 1. And then, okay, y to the negative 2, I don't have anything below it, so I'm going to write it down. And then now with my z's. Now notice how this exponent is negative. Okay, you want to make sure you do top minus bottom. So z to the 3 minus negative 5. Now, let's simplify. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Then y to the negative 2. And then 3 minus negative 5 is the same thing as saying 3 plus positive 5. So this becomes z to the positive 8. Okay, so now I see my base of the 4, my base of the x, my base of the y, and my base of the z. So I see it where I only have the base up here once. So ask yourself, is this simplified? And the answer is no. We're not allowed to have negative exponents, and we also have a zero exponent. Well, we learned in our properties of exponents, anything to the zero power has a value of one. And if you go back up to the top and just use common sense, if all I have was four divided by four, well, we know that four divided by four is one. So we could have started off and just canceled those two out to start with. Okay, so then now, I look at this x to the negative 1. Are we allowed to have negative exponents? No. So the rule is move it to lose it. So in this case, I'm going to move both of these because they both are negative exponents. So the only thing that's not going to move is the z to the 8. So it's going to stay on top. And then the bottom, I'm going to have x, y squared. So then ask yourself, is this simplified? And the answer is yes. Okay, next example. So now we're going to see why it's really important to know your properties. So when in doubt, expand it out, okay? The example that I looked at, that we just looked at, we could have expanded everything out and have it make more sense. Well, hopefully it made sense anyways, but we could have expanded it out. But in this example, you're going to see why we can't. You see, rational means integers. That falls in the rational category but fractions are also considered rational. So in this example, we're gonna have some with a fractional exponent. So 2a to the 2 thirds, 
times 3b to the 1 fourth, and then a to the 1 third times 5b to the 1 half. Okay, so before I start, I look and I think, okay, what operations is going on? So, yes, I have parentheses, which usually means distribute, but I don't have any, any other exponents outside of those parentheses. So, the only operation that I have going on here is multiplication. So, since all I have is multiplication, I'm going to apply my product rule, which says same base, add the exponents. So, the first thing I want to do, though, is use the commutative property and rewrite this so that my bases are beside each other, okay? So notice how I have a two, a three, and a five. And again, the only operation that's going on here is multiplication. So I'm gonna write those numbers beside each other. Two times three times five. Then I have an a to the two thirds, and I have an a to the one third. And then I have a b to the one-fourth, and I have a b to the one-half. Okay, so same base, add exponents. So this becomes a to the two-thirds plus one-third, and this becomes b to the one-fourth plus one-half. And then here, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30, so this becomes 30. So now, what is 2 thirds plus 1 third? Well, we've got the same base here, uh, or sorry, we have the same denominator, so we can just add the tops. 2 plus 1 is 3, a to the 3 over 3, oh, well that's 1, so this becomes now 30 a to the first power, or 30a. So what about 1 fourth plus 1 half? Well, find a common denominator, which is going to be 4. Okay, so then now I'm going to add the tops. Well, 2, to make it a 4, I had to times the top and the bottom by 2. So this becomes now 1 plus 2 over 4, or b to the 3 fourths. So, always ask yourself, is this simplified? Oh, sorry, now I can see it better. So, I can't do anything else with the 30. I can't do anything else with the A. With the B, I have one base. They're not negative. So, the answer is we're simplified. So, one more example. And then you all are going to try some on your own. So example three. So again, fractional exponents, so n to the one half to the 10, and then four m times n to the negative two thirds, all to the third power. Okay, so notice here how I've got powers to a power. Okay, so let's start by getting rid of the parentheses. So in this one, I have a power to a power, which says to multiply your exponents. So this becomes 1 half times 10. Well, half of 10 is 5, so this becomes n to the fifth power. Now the next one, you are going to apply the, the rule um, power of a product because I have a power, several things inside the parentheses, and then also notice how I have another power. So I'm going to distribute that 3 to everything inside the parentheses. So it's going to go to the 4, so 4 to the 3rd. Please don't call that 12. 4 to the 3rd power, okay? m to the 3rd power. And then now I'm going to have to multiply here. So this is negative 2 thirds times 3. I'm going to go ahead and call it 3 over 1. 
Okay, so four to the third power has a value of 64. Then m to the third power. So what is negative two thirds times three? Well, if you go back to multiplying fractions and we'll just do it over here to the side, negative two times three over three times one. And like we said before, those threes will cancel each other out, leaving me with a negative two. So this becomes n to the negative two. Okay, so we're getting there. So again, always ask yourself, is this simplified? And so the answer is no, because I have an n here and an n here. And so I can use my commutative property, 64m to the third. And if I put those together, or I can just go ahead and apply my rule, which is same base, add your exponents. So five plus negative two. Well, five plus negative two is three. So 64m to the third n to the third. And now we are simplified. Okay, so we've looked at three examples, including going over the properties of exponents. There is gonna be a practice assignment related to this. If you can download it, at least see the questions, and then I will post the key soon. Eventually, you're gonna have a school note assessment where you can apply and it's it's a school net assessment, but it's a quick check. So you can apply and see if you're getting it. Okay, remember you can always send me an email or call if you've got questions. Hope everything is going well at home.